The Ahom Kingdom, 1228–1826, also called Kingdom of Assam was a kingdom in the Brahmaputra Valley in Assam, India. It is well known for maintaining its sovereignty for nearly 600 years and successfully resisting Mughal expansion in northeast India. Established by Sukhafa, a Thai prince from Mong Mao, it began as a Mong in the upper reaches of the Brahmaputra based on wet rice agriculture. It expanded suddenly under Suhungmung in the 16th century and became multi-ethnic in character, casting a profound effect on the political and social life of the entire Brahmaputra Valley. The kingdom became weaker with the rise of the Moamoria Rebellion, and subsequently fell to repeated Burmese invasions of Assam. With the defeat of the Burmese after the First Anglo-Burmese War and the Treaty of Yandabo in 1826, control of the kingdom passed into East India Company hands. Though it came to be called the Ahom Kingdom in the colonial and subsequent times, it was largely multi-ethnic, with the ethnic Ahom people constituting less than 10% of the population toward the end. The 1901 Census of India enumerated approximately 179,000 people identifying as Ahom. The latest available census records slightly over 2 million Ahom individuals however, estimates of the total number of people descended from the original Thai Ahom settlers are as high as 8 million. The total population of Assam being at 31 million according to the 2011 census, they presently constitute slightly over 25%. The Ahams called their kingdom Mong Dun Shun Kam, Assamese, Zunur Exafura, English, Casket of Gold while others called it Assam. The British-controlled province after 1838 and later the Indian state of Assam came to be known by this name. History The Ahom Kingdom was established in 1228 when the first Ahom King Chao Lung Su Ka Pha came from Mong Mao which is now included within the Dahong Dai and Jingpo Autonomous Prefecture of Yunnan in People's Republic of China and entered the Brahmaputra Valley, crossing the rugged Putkai mountain range. He was accompanied by his three queens, two sons, several nobles and their families, other officials and families, and soldiers totaling more than 9,000 persons. He crossed the Putkai and reached Namruk on 2 December 1228 and occupied a region on the south bank with the Burhidaing River in the north, the Dikau River in the south and the Putkai Mountains in the east. He befriended the local groups, the Barahi and the Marans, finally settled his capital at Charadeo and established the offices of the Dongarias, the Burhagohain and the Borguhin. In the 1280s, these two offices were given independent regions of control, and the check and balance that these three main offices accorded each other was established. The Ahams brought with them the technology of wet rice cultivation that they shared with other groups. The people that took to the Ahom way of life and polity were incorporated into their fold in a process of Ahamization. As a result of this process, the Barahi people, for instance, were completely subsumed, and some of other groups like some Nagas and the Moran peoples became Ahams, thus enhancing the Ahom numbers significantly. This process of Ahamization was particularly significant till the 16th century, when under Suhungmung, the kingdom made large territorial expansions at the cost of the Chutia and the Kachari kingdoms. The expansion was so large and so rapid that the Ahamization process could not keep pace and the Ahams became a minority in their kingdom. This resulted in a change in the character of the kingdom and it became multi-ethnic and inclusive. Hindu influences, which were first felt under Bamuni Kanwar at the end of the 14th century, became significant. The Assamese language entered the Ahom court and co-existed with the Thai language for some time in the 17th century before finally replacing it. The rapid expansion of the state was accompanied by the installation of a new high office, the Borpatragohain, at par with the other two high offices and not without opposition from them. Two special offices, the Sadiakoa Gohan and the Marangikoa Gohan were created to oversee the regions won over from the Chutia and the Kachari kingdoms respectively. The subjects of the kingdom were organized under the Paik system, initially based on the Foyd or kinship relations, which formed the militia. The kingdom came under attack from Turkic and Afghan rulers of Bengal, but it withstood them. 
On one occasion, the Ahams under Tun Kham Borguhin pursued the invaders and reached the Karatoya River, and the Ahams began to see themselves as the rightful heir of the erstwhile Kamarupa kingdom. The Ahom kingdom took many features of its mature form under Pratap Singha. The Paik system was reorganized under the professional Kel system, replacing the kinship based Foyd system. Under the same king, the offices of the Borfukan, and the Borbarua were established along with other smaller offices. No more major restructuring of the state structure was attempted till the end of the kingdom. The kingdom came under repeated Mughal attacks in the 17th century, and on one occasion in 1662, the Mughals under Mir Jumla occupied the capital, Gargan. The Mughals were unable to keep it, and in at the end of the Battle of Saraghat, the Ahams not only fended off a major Mughal invasion, but extended their boundaries west, up to the Manas River. Following a period of confusion, the kingdom got itself the last set of kings, the Tungkunjia kings, established by Gadidhar Singha. The rule of Tungkunjia kings was marked by peace and achievements in the arts and engineering constructions. The later phase of the rule was also marked by increasing social conflicts, leading to the Moamoria Rebellion. The rebels were able to capture and maintain power at the capital Rangpur for some years, but were finally removed with the help of the British under Captain Welsh. The following repression led to a large depopulation due to emigration as well as execution, but the conflicts were never resolved. A much weakened kingdom fell to repeated Burmese attacks and finally after the Treaty of Yandabo in 1826, the control of the kingdom passed into British hands. <laughs> Ahom economic system The Ahom kingdom was based on the Paik system, a type of corvi labour that is neither feudal nor Asiatic. The first coins were introduced by Suklenmung in the 16th century, though the system of personal service under the Paik system persisted. In the 17th century when the Ahom kingdom expanded to include erstwhile coke and Mughal areas, it came into contact with their revenue systems and adapted accordingly. <laughs> Ahom administration Swargadio and Patra Mantris The Ahom kingdom was ruled by a king, called Swargadio Ahom language, Chow Pha, who had to be a descendant of the first king Sukhafa. Succession was generally by primogeniture but occasionally the great Gohanes could elect another descendant of Sukhafa from a different line or even depose an enthroned one. Dongarias, Sukhafa had two great Gohanes to aid him in administration, Burha Gohane and the Borguhan. In the 1280s, they were given independent territories, they were veritable sovereigns in their given territories called Bilat or Raja. The Burha Gohanes territory was between Sadia and Garalua River in the north bank of the Brahmaputra River and the Borgohanes territory was to the west up to the Burai River. They were given total command over the Paiks that they controlled. These positions were generally filled from specific families. Princes who were eligible for the position of Swargadio were not considered for these positions and vice versa. In the 16th century Suhungmung added a third Gohan, Borpatragohane. The Borpatragohane's territory was located between the territories of the other two Gohanes. Royal officers, Pratap Singha added two offices, Borbarua and Borfukan, that were directly under the king. The Borbarua, who acted as the military as well as the judicial head, was in command of the region east of Kaliabor not under the command of the Dongarias. He could use only a section of the Paiks at his command for his personal use as opposed to the Dangarias, the rest rendering service to the Ahom state. The Borfukan was in military and civil command over the region west of Kaliabor, and acted as the Swargadeo's viceroy in the west. Borbaruis were mostly from different Kachari communities, while Borfukans were from the Chutia community. Patra Mantris, the five positions constituted the Patra Mantris Council of Ministers. From the time of Supimpha 1492-1497, one of the Patra Mantris was made the Rajmantri Prime Minister, also Borpatro, Ahom language, Shunglung, who enjoyed additional powers and the service of a thousand additional paiks from the Jakechuk village. Other officials 
The Borborua and the Borfukan had military and judicial responsibilities, and they were aided by two separate councils of Pukans. The Borfukan Sora sat at Guwahati and the Borborua's Sora at the capital. Superintending officers were called Boruas. Among the officers the highest in rank were the Pukans. Six of them formed the council of the Borborua, but each had also his separate duties. The Nabecha Pukan, who had an allotment of thousand men managed the royal boats, the Bitarual Pukan, the Na Pukan, the Dihingia Pukan, the Deka Pukan and the Neog Pukan formed the council of Pukan. The Borfukan also had a similar council of six subordinate Pukans whom he was bound to consult in all matters of importance. This council included Pani Pukan, who commanded 6,000 paikes, Deka Pukan who commanded 4,000 paikes, the Dihingia Pukan, Nek Pukan and two Chutia Pukans. The Baruas of whom there were twenty or more included Bandari Barua or Treasurer, the Dulia Barua, who was in charge of the royal palanquins, the Chadang Barua who superintended executions, Kanakar Barua was the chief artificer, Sonadar Barua was the mint master and chief jeweller, the Bez Barua was the physician to the royal family, Hadi Barua, Gora Barua, etc. Other official included twelve Raikawas, and a number of Katakas, Kakatas and Dole. The Raikawas were governors of given territories and commanders of 3,000 paikes. They were arbitrator who settled local disputes and supervised public works. The Katakas were envoys who dealt with foreign countries and hill tribes. The Kakatas were writers of official documents, and the Dole expounded astrology and determined auspicious time and dates for any important event and undertaking. Governors. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the royal families ruled certain areas, and they were called Raja. Charing Raja, the heir apparent to the Swargadio, administered the tracts around Joypur on the right bank of the Burhidying River. Tipham Raja is the second in line. Namrup Raja is the third in line. Members of the royal families who occupy lower positions are given regions called Mels, and were called Meldangia or Melkau Raja. Meldangia Gohanes were princes of an even lesser grade, of which there were two, Majumelia Gohan and Sarumelia Gohan. Royal ladies were given individual Mels, and by the time of Rajeshwar Singha, there were twelve of them. The most important of these was the Radangia Mel given to the chief queen. Forward governors, who were military commanders, ruled and administered forward territories. The officers were usually filled from the families that were eligible for the three great Gohanes. Sadia Koa Gohan based in Sadia, administered the regions that were acquired after the conquest of the Chutia kingdom in 1523. Marangi Koa Gohan administered the region that were contiguous to the Naga groups west of the Donsiri River. Solal Gohan administered a great part of Nagan and a portion of Cheridur after the headquarters of the Borfukan was transferred to Gati. Kajalimakia Gohan served under the Borfukan, administered Kajalimak and maintained relations with Jainsha and Damarua. Jagil Gohan served under Borborua, administered Jagi at Nagon and maintained relations with seven tribal chiefs, called Sat Raja. Lesser governors were called Raikhawas, and some of them were Baka, Daring, Soligori, Abhaperth. Dependent kings or vassals were also called Raja. Except for the Raja of Rani, all paid an annual tribute. These Rajas were required to meet the needs for resources and paikes when the need arose, as during the time of war. Daring Raja ruled the later day Daring district, and were the descendants of Sundar Narayan, a great grandson of Chilarai of the Koch dynasty. Rani Beltola ruled the tracts southwest of Guwahati, and were the descendants of Gaj Narayan, a grandson of Chilarai of the Koch dynasty. Luki Bardur Damarua Tapakuchi Topic <inaudible> Paik officials The AHOM kingdom was dependent on the paik system a form of corvi labor Every common subject was a paik and four paiks formed a ghat at any time of the year one of the paiks in the ghat rendered direct service to the king as the others in his ghat tended to his fields the paik system was administered by the paik officials. Bora was in charge of 20 paiks, a hoikia of 100 and a hazarika of 1000. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Land Survey. 
Gadidhar Singha became acquainted with the land measurement system of Mughals during the time he was hiding in Kamrup, before he succeeded to the throne. As soon as the wars with Mughals were over he issued orders for the introduction of a similar system throughout his dominions. Surveyors were imported from Koch Behar and Bengal for the work. It was commenced in Sibsagar and was pushed on vigorously, but it was not completed until after his death. Nogan was next surveyed, and the settlement which followed was supervised by Rudra Singha himself. According to historians, the method of survey included measuring the four sides of each field with a nal, or bamboo pole of 12 feet meters length and calculating the area, the unit was the lucha, or 144 square feet .4 square meters and 14,400 square feet 1,340 square meters, is one biga. Four biga makes one pura. A similar land measurement system is still being followed in modern Assam. Topic. Classes of people Subinfa 1281 the third Ahom king, delineated the Satgarya Ahom, Ahom of the Seven Houses, aristocracy, the Kayafa, the Burha Gohain and the Borguhin families the Gohains, and four priestly lineages, the Diodai, the Mohan, the Bailung and the Shiring the Gogwa. These lines maintained exogamous marital relationships. The number of lineages increased in later times as either other lineages were incorporated, or existing lineages divided. The king could belong to only the first family whereas the Burha Gohain and the Borguhin only to the second and the third families. Most of the Borfukans belonged to the Chutia ethnic group, whereas the Borburuis belonged to the Moran, Kachari, Shiring and Kamti groups. Later on Naga, Mizing and Nara Mogong oracles became a part of the Bailung group. The extended nobility consisted of the landed aristocracy and the spiritual class that did not pay any form of tax. The Apaikan Chamua was the gentry that were freed from the Kells and paid only money tax. The Paikan Chamua consisted of artisans, the literati and skilled people that did non-manual work and rendered service as tax. The Canary Paik rendered manual labor. The lowest were the Likas, Bondi Bedi and other serfs and bondsmen. There was some degree of movement between the classes. Momai Tamulai Borburua rose from a bondsman through the ranks to become the first Borburua under Pratap Singha. See also Ahom dynasty Muang Paik system Singaraiaratha ceremony All Thai Ahom Students Union Notes <laughs>